is going to be 2-1 uh, for homework tonight. What else should you do besides just doing your homework that is up on that will be on focus? What else should you do? Because we're in chapter two. Yeah, you're supposed to take out chapter one from your notebook, put that somewhere and keep that. Don't throw it away because we this is an EOC class. We're going to keep using that information, so don't throw it away. Put it somewhere at your house, like in another binder. Tear out chapter two and put that in your, your binder that you bring back and forth to class, please. So that will be expected by Monday that you have chapter two torn out and put in your binder. All right, so first, let's talk about this. What did I just draw? Are we allowed to assume that they are parallel? Did most of us, Annette, and you guys did a good job. My, all my, most of my classes, as soon as I put that up there, guess what they said? We drew two parallel lines, and you guys are correct. We are not allowed to make assumptions in here. So, here is what you'll be looking for. What do you think that little symbol is that I just drew? That that little arrowhead that's in the middle of the line set, the line, not on the ends, on the middle, that tells you that those two lines are parallel. That symbolizes that those two lines are parallel. Exactly. So just like we had last when we had triangles, if I said this and this, what would those arc marks tell you? that those two are the same. Now, what if I had a second pair <clears throat> of lines that I wanted to be parallel? Could I do that? What would that technically mean? So what would that technically mean right now, the way I have it drawn? That would mean that they're all parallel. Does it matter that it looks like they're not? If I make that mark, that tells the person they are supposed to be all parallel, and you're not allowed to use your eyes. So that's not what I meant. What do you think I'm going to do if I wanted these two to be parallel and the other two to be parallel, but not parallel to each other? No? Yeah, just like we did the double arcs over here, to mean that these two are the same, but not the same as the one arc, we would do a double arrowhead kind of right stacked on top of each other. That would say that these two are parallel and these two are parallel, but not all four of them are parallel to each other. Pretty simple, right? Just these little arc marks or marks that tell us congruency marks. It makes sense. All right, this line that I just drew is called a transversal. Transversal is a line that goes through two or more lines and it is makes some special things happen when those two or lines, two or more lines that intersects are parallel to each other. It technically is, it's just not worth a hill of beans for us. Just the line that intersects two other uh, lines. Transversal. Two or two or more. If it just intersects one, what do we call it? Intersecting lines. When it's two, it's so it's it's intersecting this line and this line, we call it a transversal. But it can be more, like it could be intersecting these lines and it would still be a transversal. Oh my goodness. My board's acting up. Her and I are gonna have a chat. All right, does that make sense so far? All right, so. Let's start making this. I just keep redrawing it just to make it clear for you. This is called a what now? 
And I said, it's still called transversal, even when the lines are parallel, but it really some special stuff happens when these lines are parallel. So I'm going to name these angles. How many angles are up here that it that formed? So eight total. You guys start telling me stuff about these angles, but you already know. This is our review from last section. There should be stuff that you know is 100% true because of what we did last chapter. Go ahead, just start calling it out. Yeah, go ahead. No. Angle one, that, that's from last, from, from last chapter. Angle one is congruent to angle four. Now I want you to notice this because I'm going to start becoming a little bit more particular. I told you I was getting your feet wet last chapter. Now I'm going to get a little more stickler. What did I put in between when I said the angle one is what to angle four? Congruent. Congruent. What did I change here now? Measure of angle one. When I talk about angle one, I'm talking about the part angle one. When I say the measure of angle one, what am I actually talking about? How the value of the arc, the, the angle. And that is going to be equal to the measure of angle four. Um, what else did we talk about? Yes, the measure of angle four is equal to the measure of angle one. Angle one is congruent to angle four, right? Notice the difference between the little symbol in between them. What else do we know? There's more up there from last chapter. Come on. Yep, go ahead. Two and three. Why? By the way, why are these congruent? What are they called? That is our, remember, that's the most important thing we talk about. These are called vertical angles. What else are vertical angles? Angle two and angle three. What else? There's more. Five and eight. Angle six and angle seven. Those are all def, def, um, vertical angles by definition. Those are all from last chapter. Yes? And there's more. Beautiful. She said angle one and angle two. If I take the measure of angle one, and I add it to the measure of angle two, they equal 180. If I was using a proof, what would be my reason? I know that that is true. What is my reason? No. A special name. No, that is a name for it, but it's not the good name for it. Nope. Yes, I am doing angles addition, but because they add up to 180, there's a special name for them. No. What? Linear pairs. What's the difference? Good. And I'm glad. Listen, I'm not mad at you if you, you said the wrong thing. We're fixing this stuff. What's the difference between linear pairs and supplementaries? You see this angle right here is 30 degrees. Did you see this angle right here is 150 degrees? Are those supplementary? Yes, because they add up to be what? But do you see how they're not on the same line? Do you see how this angle and this angle are form this line, these are called a linear pair. Is this a linear pair? Is this a linear pair? It still adds up to 180. Why? What, what is the name of it called? Linear what? Linear what? So, linear pair, what does a pair normally mean? Makes sense? Now, does that still add up to 180? Yes, but if, that, you, if you were discussing that, you would have to make it to where it was only two of them. So you'd have to be like, this is one angle, and then this is a second one, which we can do. Do you follow me with that? Those two would be a linear pair. All right. So what else is linear pairs up here? Come on, we there's so many linear pairs up here. Just start calling them out. Angle what? Angle five and eight are not a linear pair. Five and six. Five and six are. Wait, wait, wait. 
five and six. How come five and eight are what? Vertical angles. So it's okay to make mistakes. We're going to fix them, though. No, you're all right. Linear pair. What else? You guys skipped way, way past where I would be. Angle three and four. Angle seven and eight. You guys are still missing so many. Six and eight. Six and eight. Look, look, here, look. What about one and two? What about one and three? What about two and four? What about three and four? Five and seven. Five and six. Six and eight. Seven and eight. Those are all linear pairs. Those, this, this is review. You should understand those from last chapter. That is the vocabulary that I said is the most important thing when it comes to geometry. Now let's start talking about some new stuff. What is this line called? Is it? Does it matter if it's a tran does does a does the parallel part matter about them being called a transversal? No. Is it still a transversal? But in order for this stuff that I'm about to show you to be cool, they must be parallel. If they aren't parallel, then everything that I'm gonna tell you from now on. Is not going to be true. So it's still a transversal, but it won't carry the special weight it does unless there, those two lines are parallel. Do you follow what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. All right, so, oh man, I found out we have a hard time knowing our right and our left in some of my classes. Yep, but we shouldn't have to do that. Hey, what hand do you write with? Okay, so then the other one's your left hand. You write with your, they, she said right. I was looking at her. Whatever your hand that you write with, you should know that one is dominant and the other one's the opposite side. You still have a dominant hand, but you're going to use more for like, you know, I write with my right or my whatever. They normally have a dominant kind of a hand that they, I write with my right hand. That, huh? I don't know which one it is. I don't really care. They're both pretty good. So, right here, everybody's trying to figure out what dominant eye is. Hey, oh my. So, here are the things that we're going to discuss. There are going to be other pieces. So, this is the, what would you call number one? If I, if I was just looking at this cluster of four, so if I was looking at that cluster of four, kind of for a second, don't worry about these down here. Don't worry about those right now. What would you describe one as? Top. Good. What would you describe two? And remember, we're only looking at one, two, three, and four. What would you describe three as? And four? Does that make sense? Now let's do the same thing for five, six, and seven, and eight, but only worried about those guys. What would you describe five as? Please listen. What would you describe six as? Left. Does everybody understand that so far? Okay, do you see one is in the same spot as what in the other cluster? So we call this corresponding. If I said, hey, we're gonna, you know, correspond or like our matches are gonna correspond, our, our outfits are gonna cor correspond, what does that mean? Gonna match, right? So let's match them up. One matches up with five. Why? They're both in the same location, so we call them corresponding. So angle one and angle five are considered corresponding. This is the definitions that we need to know. Angle two is the same as what? Angle six, good. Angle three is the same as angle, this corresponds with seven. And angle four corresponds with angle what? And if these two lines are parallel, 
What do you think that means about these angles? They are? So if I told you this was 120 degrees, what would that mean this has to be? Does that make sense? I'm just drawing it the same way just to help you first understand this. But remember, it doesn't always have to be like this. Technically, could your parallel lines be up and down and your transversal be like that? This would correspond with one, two, three, or four. Which one would this one correspond with? One. Do you see what I'm talking about? And this one right here would correspond with four. Okay? It doesn't matter which way it turned. You're going to do that same kind of idea or concept. Those are called corresponding. Corresponding angles are what? As long as what? As long as those lines are parallel. If those are lines aren't parallel, we can't make any assumptions about them. All right, next one. Next one we call these things alternate exterior angles. All right, let's break down the word because some of you guys think that we try to make this as hard as we can for you, but we don't. We try to make these words make sense. What does to alternate mean? Switch, right? So switch. What would exterior be? Okay, so do you see this is the parallel line and this is the parallel line? If those formed a house, what would you consider to be the exterior? One, two, seven, and eight. Does that make sense? Okay, now alternate means on one side of the um, transversal. And one means on the other side. So like angle one and angle what? Take a guess. Angle eight. Because if you look, this is exterior. Eight is also what? But it's on one side of the transversal and the other one's on the opposite side of it. Do you follow me? Alternate exterior. Angle two and angle what? Seven are called alternate exterior. Will this always be angle seven, by the way? Can they change the number? Do I really care about the number or do I care about the concept of the locations? Yes. What? What's up? No. Why not? Right? And guess what we're going to call them? We're going to call them alternate interiors. That's my next one. So the next ones, that's why I was saying if you understand. Uh, uh, in the last one down with papers in it. It's the fourth one down. Yep. So alternate interior angles. That would be angle three and angle what? Six. Angle four and angle. And what do you think these guys are? Now let's talk about some proofs on why we know this to be true. And I'm going to give you crappy proofs in the beginning, meaning I'm not giving them like perfectly formal. I'm just trying to get you guys in the mindset of thinking like a proof. Are you following me? Okay. So let's prove that how do we know alternate exteriors are congruent? When we go to use a proof, can I just use the name to say that's what it is? It would be like in a definition, when you define a word, what are you not allowed to use? Word. You can't be like, you know, flower. It's a flower. Right? It, it's, but they have like a definition that talks about like what makes up a flower. Right? And like pollinates this type of the part of the tree or, you know what I'm saying? Okay? You can't use the word to define it. So if I ask you to prove that alternate exterior angles are congruent, you can't say because they're alternate exterior angles. No, that's not going to work. So I want you to help me, Damon, here we go. I want you to help me prove that angle one and angle eight are congruent when these two are parallel. And that would be called alternate exterior. But I want you to prove to me why we know always, no matter what happens, always alternate exterior angles are congruent. 
All right, what do we know about one and five, guys? Angle, the measure of angle one is congruent or equal, I put measure, so I should put equal, is equal to the measure of angle five. Why do we know that to be true? What's our reasoning? Corresponding. Does everybody understand that? What else do we know about five? The measure of angle five is what? Remember, I'm trying to I'm trying to connect one to eight. So see how we can connect those. See how, what we can do. So we connected one to five. Then we can connect five to eight because they're called what? All right. What's the next step then? What? Measure of angle one. Therefore, has to be congruent to the measure of angle 8. Why? 1 equals 5. 5 equals 8. Then 1 has to equal 8. What's that called? Someone said it. That is the transitive. That is the one we need to work on. A equals B. This is B equaling C. Then A has to equal C. Transitive. What? But what did I say? We, if we're trying to prove that all alternate exteriors are congruent, we can't use alternate exterior angles. We can't use the name to define it or to prove it. Now, now that we proved it, we can use it later on in proofs. But when you're actually making that proof, you can't use the name of it. Does that make sense? All right, next one. Same side, interior. Oh, just a lot of vocab. What do you think would be considered same side interior? one? Yeah. And what do you think they do? What do you think measure of angle three and measure of angle five? What do you think about them? Okay, they're on the same side. What do you think about them? First off, can all these angles up here be equal? Oh, I definitely asked you a trick question. I said, can they? What would they all have to be if they were all going to be equal to each other? But 90 degrees. Why? Because this is 90, and then this would have to be 90 to add up to be what? And then all of them would be 90. Does that make sense? But for the most part, are they all going to be 90? Probably not. So are all these angles up here the same? Okay, so what do you think the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 5 what do you think that'll add up to? What do you think that'll add up to? Why? We'll prove that in just a second. What else do you think would happen? There's another set of same side interiors. Measure of angle four plus the measure of angle six would also have to add up to. How come I can prove that to be true? Ah, uh, it's not a linear pair. Good try. It's not a linear pair, but let's let's say, what do we know about? We're trying to prove that one or three and five together add up to be. This is your proof. Notice. On the test, it didn't matter how many times I told you guys, you still did it. I said never use the word prove as a reason given. Do you remember me saying never use prove as a reason? I had so many people put the word prove. So I want you to prove this. All right, first, what can we start with? I'm not even going to give you anything. Nope. 
can't you can't use what you're trying to prove as the first thing. You got to tell me some stuff that we know. Yep. Okay. That's fine. Yep. So that might that would be something we would start with. Line. So L. By the way, this also means parallel. If they say that they give you that symbol, not circled. It will not be circled. It will look like this L with these two lines. That means parallel to M. So L is parallel to M. What would be the reason? Since it's in our diagram, what will we write as our reason? Given. Two, what else could I say about these things? What else do you know to be true? We are trying to connect that one or three plus five equals 180. What? Um, it will help me. One and two are linear pairs. Oh, you're on the right track, but I don't need two. Two's nothing, and I'm not. I'm trying to get three and five. Three and four are linear pairs. Hmm. I mean, you could do that. Can we do one and three? Our linear pair? So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals 180. And what's the reason? What's the reason? Linear pair? You follow me? Okay. What else can I say? Remember, I'm trying to connect three and five together, being 180. Boom. The measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle five. And what would be my reasoning there? I'm allowed to use it if I told you it's a definition. What are those called? Corresponding. You need to know these by this weekend. That's what you're going to be working on is memorizing these. Four, what can I then say? Ah, measure of angle. Well, we would technically go the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180. What is that called? Right here, I wrote the same exact thing, except I took this out and put something else that equals it in its place. It's called substitution. When you take something out, put something else equal to in its place. Does that make sense? And we got what they wanted us to prove. We proved that that is equal to that. Yes. No. We are going to keep proving things. We've got to keep practicing those proofs. They're going to keep coming up. All right. I think we did all the, the vocab. Now let's start using it. Let's start using it. All right. Can you fill in all the rest of the angles for me? Tell me what angles you can fill in for sure. Number five. What is the measure angle five? We'll talk about that later. I would not write that right now. Why do we know four has to be 120? Vertical. What else do we know? We don't know anything about eight. Two is 60. And three is 60. Why do I have to stop there? And you guys, I know I'm going to keep telling it to you until I beat it into your head. Why can we not say anything about 5, 6, and 7 right now? What were we doing? though? Because we've been drawing this picture, we've been drawing this picture, and then drawing this picture. What did we automatically assume? That they were parallel, and we started making connections. And what did I say? We cannot make the connections back and forth until we know what about these two lines. Now can we start talking about 5 and 6? 
And so this is, should be pretty easy. If this is 120, why do we know this is 120? Give me the name of it, why we know it is. Vertical angles. If we know this is 120, why do we know this is 120? What are those two called to each other? Those are called corresponding. If this is 120, why do we know this is 120? If I'm comparing it to this angle up here, alternate exterior angles, are you with me? Okay, what if I make this connection? What if I say this is 120, so this has to be 120 because they are corresponding. Does that make sense? Now because I know this is 120, why can I say this is 120? Do you see how you're using different definitions to show why they are what they are? So it depends on where you started and where you go to as far as why you can say what you say. Yes or no? What can we say about 2? Why can we say 2 is 60? They are a linear pair. Since we can say 2 is 60, why can we say 7 is also 60? Alternate. Next year. If I know 2 is 60, why do I know 3 is 60? Vertical angles. Why, if I know 3 is 60, why do I know 6 is 60? Alternate interior angles. Are you guys getting what I'm talking about by knowing these definitions? Fill in the rest of those angles for me. Actually, fill in all the angles. No, I want you to solve for X. So it should have been 4x. I've asked you guys politely not to, to pack up before the bell rings. 4x plus 2x equals 180. You could use your algebra to solve for x. And then you can plug this in, and boom, you can go to town. That will be your homework. If you see a complex figure, if you see a complex figure like this, Sometimes you might want to break this figure into different little pieces. I've talked about redrawing things in algebra or geometry. You might want to do that tonight for homework. You will have new homework, so please look for it. Thank you, too.